In this video, I'm going to be discussing the different coordinate systems, namely the Cartesian, the cylindrical, and the polar coordinate systems. So let's start off with Cartesian. I'm going to zoom in on here. Let's move to the top of the page. Okay. Let's start off here. We have Cartesian. Okay, so Cartesian coordinates have a very linear nature to them, um, which is apparent, especially when considering what they are. They're, they're straight lines. It is x, y, z. And this is usually what you learn back in uh, you know, elementary school is the Cartesian coordinate system. And just to kind of give you an idea, um, I'm going to attempt to draw well, let's just do solid lines. We'll have a square here and if you can kind of humor me with your ability to imagine 3D objects just imagine that box and each of these sides is one. Okay, so what you have is what is known as your unit square. And this is um, this is going to be the basis of Cartesian coordinates. So when do I want you to imagine using this coordinate system. Um, anytime you start seeing things moving in a straight line, uh, if you see uh, a road that has, you know, that is a straight line, um, what you can imagine is that the car, a car is traveling down that in a linear fashion, straight line, lines, just imagine lines. Um, another fashion is when you, we think of a ball being a ball being launched off um, it can actually follow a path which actually breaks down into different components in the Cartesian system so namely if we have if we have our ball we can break it up into both X we can, oh, we can break the component, right, into both the x components, which is in green, and the y components, which is in orange. So what you'll find is that the only forces acting on that given ball is going to be gravity and if there was um, like a frictional resistance you could include that, but in the ideal situations, um, usually with our ball, the only thing that acts on it in a free body diagram sense is going to be force of gravity, which is going to be straight down. One thing that you can notice about this is that this is in the, if you were to go back and look at our coordinate system, this is x and y. So you can see that this this force is actually force of y, which is fantastic. So then what that means is that we can actually break the force down. We can use our dynamics equations, our kinematic equations, force equals ma, or whatever equation you feel like using, um, in just the y direction, whereas you could use other functions like um, you could just use like v2 equals v1 plus let me move us down here uh, plus xt which uh, all this is saying is that you can use like a different linearity um, 
and since they're 90 degrees that you're not going to have any interaction between the two. Um, a best way to imagine uh, the 90 degree, no interaction between different degrees, 90 degrees, is imagining a puck, uh, I think of an ice puck, uh, sliding, sliding on some ice. That's how I imagine it. Sorry, this is a terrible puck. But if it's sliding, say, in this direction to the right, and we were to push it this way, that would not stop the puck from going in the green's direction. It wouldn't stop it from going in X's direction. So um, it, what's, what's interesting is, is that using the different coordinate systems, namely Cartesian in this, in this video, um, you can actually split apart different uh, functions or, or different forces. So knowing that gravity only acts in the Y uh, coordinate system, we can actually segregate the functions in X and not have any acceleration in there. And it, and it makes things a lot simpler and it makes your math a lot easier. So anyway, um, let's. what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on in the next video and hopefully we can really dissect cylindrical video, uh, cylindrical coordinates. Thank you.